Hello and welcome to tutorial 186 from Markplex. If you're interested in easy language or learning e easy language, then please go to markplex.com and subscribe to the email list. A Markplex subscriber asked me if there was an indicator that looked for inside or outside bars and then drew lines at the high and the low of the pattern until those lines were broken. So let me just show you. Here we have an example of an inside bar. We can see that the bar, uh, the inside bar is here, the bar that it's inside is here. So what we've done is in fact we've plotted lines from the, the bar before the inside bar until they're broken. So you can see the line is drawn along here until actually we have a new pattern forming. But this, this um, plot here is broken by this bar so it stops plotting. And we just continue that process. Again we're drawing the, uh, the line here. This one is broken by this bar until we get to another pattern and then another pattern and you can see immediately the, uh, the, lower, the lower plot is broken. And we continue the higher plot until another pattern forms and the same thing, except this one continues. The uh, the highlight, the high plot, and the low plot continue a little longer, and the uh, the high plot is broken by this bar here. So let me show you the program. And incidentally, what I've done, I've done this as an indicator, but what I've also done is created two functions. So the indicator works. The uh, the functions are developed to do essentially the same thing. The first function does it using the legacy drawing tools and the second function does it using the drawing objects. So what I'll do is probably do one or two other videos uh, looking at those functions, but let's just focus on this indicator for the moment. Let's just define what an inside bar and then look at the code. So an inside bar is a two bar pattern where the inside bar is within the high and the low range of the previous bar. So the high is lower than the pre, uh, previous bar's high and the low is higher than the previous bar's low, just as we just looked. And this program has an input and that input show IB lines. And that is if we wish to plot the inside bar lines. We've got another input show OB lines and that decides whether we plot the outside bar lines. So you can have both of them with this program going at the same time. If we're looking for the inside bar lines, then this is true. We begin and then we look for the pattern and the pattern is very simply expressed as high one bar ago is greater than the current high and low one bar ago is less than the, uh, the current low. If that is true, then ins bar is set to true. And then we say if ins bar equals true, ins bar and ins bar equal true the same. Uh, we then take a value of the high of the little pattern and the low of the little pattern and we store them in these variables i b c u r i and i b c u r r low and then we're going to do a, a several plots so the first plot we're going to do is some points just to show you where the pattern has occurred and you can see on the chart those points like these ones here that are in yellow and i'll show you how we change the formatting of everything a little later and we're just doing that uh, halfway in the pattern. We're plotting plot one, but we're also plotting one bar ago because bear in mind the uh, the bar that causes the inside bar to be inside it is the previous bar. And then what we do is we set some variables here, some Boolean variables, stop IBH and stop IBL. We turn those to false and then we do the plots and we say if stop IBH is false, remember we've just got a new pattern, we've turned it to false, then we're going to plot the value of the high. We're going to plot one bar back and we're going to plot again the plot of the IB current high. That is the value we just stored up here. We do the same thing for the lows and plot four of the IB CURLO. Now what happens if the high, the high of the current bar goes above this value IB current high, then we no plot both the plot three which is the plot in here it's showing as green. We also know plot the plot one, which is the one that was showing us where the, uh, the position was located. And we say stop IBH is true. That means that we won't plot any more of these lines until we get a new pattern. And similarly for the low, that's how we do the thing for the inside bar, 
For the outside bar, it's very similar apart from we're obviously looking for a different input. We're calculating whether it's an outside bar using a different expression. So we're saying is the high one bar ago less than the current high and is the low one bar ago greater than the current low. And then if that, uh, if that evaluates, in other words, OS bar is true, then we do a very similar process to what we've just done above. Apart from the plots, we're plotting different values and you can see the rest of the code there. Now, I will say that uh, in this case on the chart, I have the values set to update, uh, update once per bar. So if we go to studies, edit studies, and we go on to the study and customize, I'm only updating the value at the end of the bar, not, not intra-bar. Now it will work intra-bar, but there are there is one little problem, and that is that the, the lines, the, uh, the dots that mark where there is a pattern, only one of those no plots because the other one's already been put in place. So if you don't mind that, then you can, uh, you can use that. In fact, let's just uh, show you how, what, what happens if we do it intra-bar. So this is now updating every tick. And we might just uh, have to edit this a little bit just to, uh, just to hone in on, on a new pattern being formed. Okay, so you can see there's potential pattern here and we've drawn these two dots and we've moved the high and the low lines, but immediately the bar went above it. So we went back to the original lines, but you'll notice that there is still a dot remaining there. So if you can live with that, then it works. If not, then, uh, then just make sure it only updates once per bar. So the um, important thing with this is how the program is set up. So I'm going to right click on my program. I'm going to go to properties and we're going to look at the chart style. Now then for plot one, I've got that set as a point and for plot five, I have that set as a point for plots three, four, seven, and eight. They're all set as lines. And you can see that for all of them, I've set the thickness to be the thickest that's available. This also would be the place where we would change the colors to our liking. So in, you've already seen plot one I've got set as yellow. That's the one that draws the, uh, the two points. Plot five is set as magenta. And then the others are a sort of mixture of colors. So this is going to look a little bit of a mess, but what we could do is now go into the study and say, we don't just want to see the inside bars. We're going to look at the outside bars as well. So I'm going to set that to true. And now you'll see a sort of spaghetti of lines and dots on the chart. Okay. So that is tutorial 186. As I say, I'm going to do at least one more video looking at the functions that have essentially the same functionality, but rather than plotting the lines, they're going to be drawing the lines and drawing them in two different uh, ways. So again, if you're interested in this sort of thing, interested in learning trade station, easy language, then please go to markplex.com and join the email list and also subscribe to this video service. Thank you.